I always wanted to know, in fact, know who are the Harappan people, because there are always debate. A lot of people say that you know the you know the Harappans came from outside, and some of us, in fact, always believe that you know they were the indigenous people. And this narrative was you know fostered very, very strongly by the Britishers, the colonial historians, because you know when they came here, they gave the impression to the whole world that you know we have come to this you know come to rule this country because people are backward here barbaric and we want to civilize them that was the narrative that spread but when you know the excavation started at harappa and mohenjo-daro in 1920s a you know, very advanced civilization was on earth even europe did not have such an advanced civilization and then of course there this colonial historians are great you know problem to explain but how to justify our rule to this you know country and then they started saying that okay you know we have the you have the remains but the people came from outside and that is how you know they started you know this you know and you know they wanted to show in fact you know that you people are not capable of this type of developments only you know we have come from outside people have come from outside and they have done the development and you know for last so many years nobody has you know nobody tried to generate scientific evidence in this particular respect i never spoke about aryans or you know this you know about this theory never made any comment till 2006 till i started to work at uh, farmana and i realized you now when i say that i miss you know that is my team you know it was a you know very you know maybe multi institutional multi disciplinary work that you know we have done and there were number of you know primary institutions involved they can call is one of them then ccmb right from the beginning was attached to this research and of course professor ganeshwar chaube and the group from maybe estonia you know all these people you know were also part of this you know maybe larger part of the uh, team that we had let me tell you frankly that when we started the work one of the objective was to extract dna of the harappan people i thank the harappans because you know they started burying the dead bodies and they had a separate graveyard so where they used to bury the dead bodies and this tradition as a uh, professor conrad has mentioned that this tradition starts from the mehergarh in fact you know which is maybe around 7000 bce and continues into the harappan period around 2600 2700 bce only difference that you know the early people buried the dead bodies within the settlement either below the living floor or in the courtyard whereas harappan side a separate graveyard and right from the beginning people believed in second life because along with the dead bodies they buried lot of goods the pottery which contain food and water we have established that scientific scientifically and their jewelry sometimes their tools so, so certainly they believe second life also getting dna in this environment is very difficult extremely difficult because the soil here is very you know adverse it is acidic soil and the climate is not really good not conducive for the preservation of the organic matter overall so very difficult in fact to get dna but still you know we started this you know international research in fact that time you know some uh, scientists from japan and and usa they had joined us but you know we miserably failed that time i admit that frankly because we were not prepared for the ancient dna research that time we had no idea in fact how to do this or how to go about we started excavating excavating the burials the way we used to excavate you know you know conventionally and then of course you know uh, we excavated you know 70 burials that time 70 skeletal remains we tried very hard to extract dna but we failed and then we realized that you know that you know that we had kept this burial open for almost two months because our objective was very you know you know different point because we wanted to come you know wanted people to come and see and you know that you know there should not be any misunderstanding so we kept them open and maybe you know whatever dna was there that got lost so that was a mistake secondly you know that you know that time when we started the research the dna science has had not advanced the way it has advanced now and that was that time it was very difficult to distinguish the ancient dna and the modern dna and dna is so sensitive that it can get into ancient dna easily because you know we are excavating the you know remains 
So naturally through, you know, maybe breathing, etc., that can get into ancient DNA. And that was all contaminated, so we miserably failed there. Then in 2010-11, then I came in contact with the scientists from Seoul National University, Seoul National University Medical College, which has got one of the finest forensic science department in the world. And they explained that, you know, that, you know, we have to change our methodology. And, you know, then, you know, we started, you know, adopting a new, uh, you know, methods for the excavation. So we started uh, using the PPE kit and uh, to make sure that, you know, there is no contamination impact in the ancient, uh, you know, burials or ancient DNA. Then also, you know, we, you know, we targeted one burial at a time. We excavated one burial, we documented that immediately. And immediately, you know, we, you know, we picked up the samples and sent to the laboratory. So we did that for, you know, all the burials. And, you know, nearly 60 burials we excavated. And then, of course, you know, we started, you know, the analysis. So we analyzed 59 burials and we did not find anything. In one burial, we found some trace of the East Asian people. And there was no way, in fact, you know, because the Harappans had never contact with East Asia at all. And then, you know, we started investigating how that, you know, that has come into the Harappan uh, burial. And then, you know, we realized that in spite of taking all the precaution, using PPE kit, masks, hand gloves, one of our students was from Korea. And his DNA got into the Harappan DNA. So how sensitive it is, I just want to do, you know, stress upon this. And then, you know, our strategy was, you know, very simple, in fact. Initially, you know, we wanted to do this research in-house. In-house means within the country only, because we have the scientists, we are archaeologists, very, you know, competent, you know, you know, scientists here. So we decided that, you know, that, you know, this entire research will be done by the Indian scientists. And uh, we started analyzing the data, and maybe, you know, in 2015-16, in fact, we got some, you know, good results. We interpreted that, and we were ready for the publication. But then, you know, we realized that you know, if you publish now, these Europeans will start criticizing, or the Americans will start criticizing, because this is the research you know, we have done, we are, we are doing for the first time in, in, the, in South Asia. And they will find some fault. Maybe they will say that this you know, analysis is not done, that you know, part is not done. So when, then we decided to involve this you know, scientist from outside. So we prepared three libraries of the samples. One, we know, of course, you know, we analyzed that sample. The other one was given to the Korean scientists. And third one was to David uh, Rick's you know, laboratory in Harvard University. And initially, we told them that you, know, that you just do the cross-checking for us. But then, you know, by that time, the science had developed. And some more analysis were done, in fact, in uh, Harvard you know, in this medical university. Uh, laboratory and you know when I got when we got the results you know which are complementary to what you know we had achieved in fact and then only we published that in 2019 now this was an exercise like you know you must have heard about you know the story of you know how Carter he went you know in search of the you know Tutankhamun's tomb and till last day you know he did not find anything and he was about to abort that, in fact, next day. And next day, he stumbled upon that very important discovery. In fact, he discovered that Tutankhamun's tomb. So something like that, you know, in, in 59, we did not find anything. And we thought that, you know, there is no way that, you know, we can study this particular aspect because the climate is very different, very adverse. We may not find any evidence. But the last, you know, this, uh, la you know, we always say the la lady luck. So, the last skeletal remain was of a lady, around 30 to 35 years old. And there, you know, we got a very strong, authentic DNA. And then, of course, you know, that was analyzed. See, you know, those who understand the population, you know, genomics, even one DNA from one skeletal remain is good enough to understand, you know, the, the composition of the population or the DNA. It is like, you know, testing rice. When we test, you know, whether rice is cooked or not, we pick it one grain. It is like that. So that criticism also, you know, has, you know, not much, uh, you know, 
uh, footing we got. But still we feel that you know, we need more samples, of course. This is just beginning. And what we are getting in fact, no, we are not reached to the conclusions. We are reached to the tentative conclusions. And we are getting indications. So that indications I'm going to tell you, know, what, this is what you know, we have been discussing. So the analysis, you know, analysis you know, in, is indicating that uh, we have also used the, you know, this uh, genetic chronology to understand the roots of the you know, Harappan population. So it is going back to almost 12,000 12, years or 10,000 BCE. In 10,000 BCE, there were hunter-gatherers, you know, maybe somewhere on the border of Afghanistan and Iran. So they broke into two groups. One came to South Asia and one went to Iran. So those who went to Iran, you know, they started getting mixed up with the Anatolian people. And the people came to South Asia. Their genes you now started getting mutated. And, you know, it, you know, it formed a distinct gene in South Asia. And then, you know, that, you know, the genes, you know, which uh, developed maybe around maybe 8,000, 9,000 years ago, the same genes continue into the Harappan people. And then, of course, you know, we also did, you know, the analysis of the modern people. Maybe we choose roughly 3,000 people. We included all the known different groups in South Asia, 140 different groups, people from different, you know, religious background, linguistic background, all were covered in this. And what we notice, in fact, at the end of the study, that most of us, from Andaman, Nicobar, till Ladakh and Kashmir, and from Bengal up to Afghanistan, we are yet to study, in fact, you know, the northeast region properly. So most of the people living in this area, they are the descendants of the Harappans because we inherit, inherit a very strong Harappan genes you know, among us.